This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Samsung Series 9 Ultrabook. This is Samsung's highest line Ultrabook. Uh, been around for a couple of years, evolves. This is the latest generation right here, second generation Ivy Bridge 2.0 GHz Intel Core i7 CPU, and the big change. Full 1080p display, really, really lovely matte display, beautiful to look at. Really gorgeous notebook, sculpted sides, half inch thick. Arguably, it's the most attractive Ultrabook in the market, and we're going to look at it now. So here it is, the Samsung Series 9. This is the latest generation available as of May 2013. And this is the refresh. This is model NP900X3E. The X3E is a significant part there that tells you this is the full HD 1920 by 1080 display version. Really cool there. Finally, we've seen a certainly ASUS with their ZenBook Prime series having full HD, Aspire S7 from Acer having full HD, so we're glad that Samsung has jumped in on that. The one thing to keep in mind here, this guy is not a touch screen. You're going to have to go with the Samsung Series 7 Ultra if you want a touch screen on this. And with Windows 8, you know, it really is nice to have the touch screen, so I leave that up to you. The good news is, though, it has a superb trackpad. A part of the problem with using Windows 8 machines without a touchscreen has been that the trackpads can be very hit or miss. This has a supersized Elan trackpad, and Samsung has really just finally gotten the drivers just right. We did get an update out of the box that updated the trackpad, but I didn't have any problems with it before. Large, just enough drag to feel good, but it's kind of like silky under your finger at the same time. Very precise, supports finger movements nicely. Two finger gestures, like two finger scrolling, moving across your windows right here, windows tile interface. Very easy to do, swiping in from the side to bring up the charms bar. It works so well that I, I'm just not feeling like, oh man, no touch screen, what a drag. But that is up to you. It depends on what you want and how forward looking you are. Worried about maybe at some point we'll start seeing more compelling applications for the Metro UI here where you would want the touch screen more often. Or if you spend most of your time in desktop mode, we're just going to use the command key to go there because this command key is for everything too if you don't want to have to touch the screen. But there it is, right at the desktop again. And once you're in desktop mode, you know what it's like. It's like using Windows. You pretty much are going to be using the mouse and keyboard more often. It's just when you're in the Live Tile Metro UI that you're going to want to have that touch screen, maybe. Now, as Samsung loves to do, there's always a couple of variations on, on each model. So if you get the 900X3E, that's this guy right here, there's going to be a dash and some letters and numbers afterwards to let you know what configuration you have. And that's going to vary the SSD capacity and the CPU mostly for this one here because 4 gigs of RAM is soldered on board so far there is no 8 gig option that's kind of a bummer by the way that is single channel RAM not dual channel soldered on why Samsung did that I don't know usually with their high end machine they go for dual channel because it's a little faster that'll bump up your Intel HD 4000 graphics benchmarks and performance a little bit speaking of which this has Intel HD 4000 graphics and we have the 900 X3E-A02 US model it means it's front for the US and this is the model that's sold by Best Buy, Amazon and a couple of others and it has a 2 gigahertz Intel Core i7 3537U so that's the refreshed Ivy Bridge CPU and they're a little bit faster than the 1.9 gigahertz that we saw for several machines a couple of months before 4 gigs of RAM, again, soldered on board, 128 gig M SATA SSD, and yes, you can replace it if you want. It's a standard M SATA configuration. We actually had a light on SSD inside of here, not a Samsung, and it benchmarked faster than the Samsung PM840, which is a very good SSD that's in our Series 7 Ultra. So don't feel bad if you get a different brand than a Samsung one, because it looks like they're going for whatever's the top performance to put in the Series 9 as they should because this is their top-of-the-line Ultrabook machine. In fact, one of the top-of-the-line notebooks that Samsung does make. Series 9 has been around for a while, and for the last couple of refreshes, it's stuck with this design, and it's a gorgeous design, so certainly no complaints there. 13.3-inch Ultrabook, 2.55 pounds of web. The lightest thing on the market, honest to God, it's so light, it's just insane. It's also incredibly thin, 0.51 inches. Razor thin. It has that mineral black ash finish as Samsung calls it which is a kind of a matte black really nice looking picks up a little fingerprint oil Samsung branding on there the logo not too huge and the contrasting it looks like it was cut just from a piece of metal beautiful looking silver around here and there's our little place where we can lift up the lid make it easier tapered size it's become Samsung's signature look right here really stunning looking isn't it, it just looks like somebody took a, a saw and, went and then polished the edges USB 3.0 port, and that's where you're going to plug in your compact charger. It comes with a 40 watt charger. 
And right here we have our micro HDMI port and this is the Ethernet port. Well, how are you going to stick an Ethernet jack in there? Aha! Uh -huh. Samsung includes this adapter in the box right here, this dongle adapter. It's kind of like going into Zenbook land where they give you a bunch of dongle adapters. Samsung only gives you one, but it's an important one. This is not just 10100 USB Ethernet. This is, uses that proprietary connector right here. There's the cover. And it goes up to gigabit Ethernet. So that's really nice because you're going to get good speeds for those of you who need to do some serious data transfer. And there's our standard RJ45. It is something you have to carry. It is something you have to remember, though. Since most Ultrabooks, especially the thinnest and lightest of them, don't have an Ethernet port, well, we'll take that gigabit Ethernet dongle. Better than nothing by a long stretch. There's our back with our vents for exhaust right there. This has two fans inside. Serious cooling there, actually, surprisingly, for our ULV CPU. USB 2.0 port here, your combo headphone mic jack. And this is a mini VGA port. They don't give you the dongle adapter for that. Samsung sells that separately for about 40 bucks if you need an adapter to go out to VGA. You could always use the HDMI port, but for those of you who maybe want to run VGA and HDMI at the same time, you could do that with this. Bottom here, again, pretty much unchanged. You can see it picks up a little bit of my fingerprint oil here. There are Phillips head zero screws that affix the bottom panel, so if you want to open this up, you actually can, but really there isn't anything here to service except for the, the MSATA SSD drive if you want to upgrade this yourself later. Since it only comes with 128 gig SSD, you might want to do that. Speaking of that, because there's a recovery partition on there and Windows is installed and all the applications, out of the box we had about 68.8 gigs actually free for our use. After running Windows updates, and installing MS Office and a couple of other smaller applications, we were down to 60 gigs free. Stereo speakers are here, 1.5 watt times 2. Pretty good sounding, certainly for a very small machine. Not as good as the Samsung Series 7 Ultra with its really nice loud JBL stuff, but good. More ventilation over here, and here's our SD card slot, nicely hidden. It's a little pop in door right there, so you can use a full-size SD card with this machine. So certainly gorgeous, certainly light, very, very premium. And it comes at a premium price. The Series 9 has always been Samsung's most expensive Ultrabook series. And really, it is trading on good looks, style, and lightness, and not always having the most cutting-edge specs. This gets refreshed a little bit more slowly than some of other Samsung's machines. Right now, certainly this one is cutting-edge, according to what's available on the market. But this guy sells for lists for $13.99. Now, Amazon and Best Buy are selling it for $12.99, so you can get it for less. And that's, again, with a 128 gig SSD, 4 gigs of RAM, but a Core i7 ULV CPU. Usually when you see manufacturers go up to the Core i7, they're also bumping up to a 256 gig SSD. A lot of them still stick with that 4 gigs of RAM. But in this case, I think so Samsung can keep the price point down a little bit and make this more accessible. They're shipping it with this 128 gig SSD option. I, I would expect that going up to a 256 could raise the price anywhere from three to four hundred dollars when that's available in the U.S. market. If we take a look at the keyboard here. Really, not a lot has changed for ever since Samsung started using this design for the Series 9. It's an excellent keyboard. It has nice tactile feel. Backlit keyboard, I, and nice thing about it is black with white backlighting, so you can actually see the backlighting, and it's adjustable through several steps. You can use the FN key right up here to set your backlighting level. And in fact, if you look at the FN row there, you've got all sorts of multimedia controls. You've got your brightness control, for example. You can hit the fan button right here to put it into quiet and low power mode. And there's my favorite, the FN lock. When you use FN lock, you don't have to hit the FN key to use all of these other keys right here. Key travel is pretty low, though. You can look at it from the side. To make a machine this skinny, there's just no room for those keys to actually go anywhere and depress. But surprisingly, it's really you can adjust to it and type on it really well. At least that's what I've found. There is like zero flex on this keyboard, by the way. No trampolining, no bouncing, all nice, thick, very rigid. The whole thing is, in fact, very rigid. You can twist the display just a little bit, not even enough to make it distort at all. It's quite rigid. Uh, the surprising thing is the keys are pretty audible. For something that doesn't have a lot of key travel, there you can feel and hear a pretty good click. So for those of you who just hate to ever hear a keyboard, you might not like that. The machine has dual band Intel Wi-Fi with Wi-Dye, that's 6235. And then uh, some earlier Series 9 models, a couple of models ago, had some trouble with the Wi-Fi. We have not had any trouble with that whatsoever. It does have two antennas inside and 
We've had good throughput even 30 feet away from our 802.11n router. It has Bluetooth 4.0, that's Intel again. As you saw, Ethernet comes via that dongle adapter. Now the real gem here and the real big difference for this particular Series 7 is the first time that they used a full 1080p display here. Uh, previously they'd used a 1600 by 900 PLS panel. PLS is like Samsung's equivalent to IPS. And it was a very nice display. I, I thought that resolution worked perfectly well in a 13-inch display. Honestly, things don't look too tiny on the Windows desktop. But personally, I felt the color accuracy was not so super duper. That wasn't a strong point, especially compared to something like the ASUS ZenBook Prime UX31A, which had really, really wide color gamut. Well, that's changed here. And this is this panel is made by BOE Hydus, a company now owned by Hyundai. But They've been making AFFS displays, which again are like IPS displays in some ways better, and I'm suspecting that that's what this is. Uh, really, really lovely color accuracy. Now, when you're looking at the live tiles, you say, okay, those are bright, those are zingy, those are super saturated and colorful, and that's all well and good. When you look at the desktop and you look at a pretty picture, and you say, wow, nice. Now, side by side next to our ZenBook Prime UX 31A and also the Samsung Series 7 Ultra that uses a wonderful display, though it's glossy and a touchscreen, a little bit different, a very wide color gamut here, something that I would be happy to use for photo editing. So even if you're not really keen on that super duper high resolution, that's important. Backlighting is also pretty even. As you can see, we have a little bit of flashing showing up at this brightness level, but much less than other monitors. And we bring it up to a maximum brightness. It's almost too bright to use, honestly. It's, it's fantastic. Now Samsung specs, they're, they're a little bit confused there. Sometimes they say it's a 400 nit display, sometimes they say it's a 300 nit display. Next to our Series 7 Ultra, which has the 350 nit display, this guy is looking a little bit brighter. Our light meter went a little bit on the fritz, so we can't measure that right now. Look for our full review to have that information on it in terms of nits of brightness. But suffice to say, this is a brighter panel than most of us would ever need. I, when I use this at 50%, it seems, gosh, more than bright enough. And the more important thing is, is it's anti-glare. It's a matte, true matte display. It doesn't have some nasty coating on top or something like that. So everything looks so vibrant and so rich. It's just really amazing the difference that it can make. And it makes me sad because I would love to have a touch screen, but right now those are always going to be glossy or they're going to have some kind of overlay to make them look matte that detracts from screen quality. It makes me want to give up on the touch just because you just can't beat this display. And no glare, no fatigue on the eyes. It looks brighter. You can use it and not worry about lights that are behind your back flat, shining on the screen. Can't re recommend it highly enough. And in fact, those of you who've used the Sony Vio Z, maybe you're looking to upgrade. Now, this doesn't have the full mobile power that the Sony Vio Z has in terms of overall processing horsepower, but when it comes to display quality, you're looking at something that can really hold up nicely and with much wider viewing angles because the Sony had a TN panel, and those don't have good viewing angles. As we turn this guy sideways and keep the backlight on, you can see stays visible, we don't get nasty color shifting, we don't get black inversion, and it's just awesome stuff. Also, those of you who are lucky enough to work outdoors in a cafe or wherever it is, given the brightness and the lack of glare, well, it's just going to be perfect for that, too. And how does the display look when playing video? Gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. Let's get that cursor out of the way. The blacks are nice and rich on it. Sharp, great contrast. I'm looking for someone to share in Speaker volume at 76%. So as Ultrabooks go, that's, that's pretty decent sound. It's not going to wow you. It's not going to beat the Series 7 Ultra with its big JBL speakers on it. But sounds pretty good. Stunning, stunning to look at. And typical of Samsung, we've got all sorts of settings here. So if you want to play with your color settings, you can too. And there's their settings app, and you can see we can control keyboard backlight and display brightness, but right here we're going to take a look at this option. First we have enabling and disabling auto brightness. Now, this has been the bane of my existence with the Samsung Series 7 Ultra. If you have one, you know that too, and some other Samsungs and, and some other laptops in general. Windows 8 has auto brightness, and you can turn that off and still you have to find settings in three other places. With this guy right here, you just go into settings using the charms and you can see how quickly and easily I'm doing that with the trackpad. And you go into your general settings right here and there's an option for adaptive screen brightness right over here and you can see I've turned it off and I have not had to mess with that and do that anywhere else. Awesome! 
So back to Samsung settings, once I've turned it off there, it also disables the checkboxes over here, so you don't have to come in here and do it again. And then we have display color options. Samsung loves to do that. You can choose no effect or standard, and standard and no effect are actually quite close. Movie mode, movie mode bright, and sharp. Sharp really jacks up the contrast a lot. Movie mode, well, increases saturation, increases, increases blues a little bit, as you can see right now, it just happened there. And movie bright, sharp, real heavy on the contrast there. I don't particularly like that, but you've got that. And you've got control over your sound here. Standard mode, R&B, music, all this kind of stuff here, so you can adjust that. And you've got network settings, and you have your power management settings, all pretty handy right here. Echo mode, battery life extender mode, USB charging, you can turn that on and off. Right there, so pretty easy to use. Samsung does a pretty nice job with that. Also, their software update application is just stellar on this. And I wish they would put all their drivers up on the web just for those who want to do it the old-fashioned way, but what they do is they make software update or SW update available for download and then you use that to pick and choose the applications and the drivers that you want. So this is what software update looks like. It'll remind you, it'll tell you if there's new stuff available for download and you can just choose to have it do everything summarily for you, make life easy. And if you want to see all the software that's available, it shows you. For example, it came with Norton Online Backup and Norton Internet Security. I didn't want that, so I removed it. It's available for download. So even apps that you remove, you can get back again. Any updaters are here. And you can see all the different display drivers and pick and choose as you see fit for the stuff that you want. If you're kind of picky about bloatware and all that kind of thing, you maybe want to use your own drivers. Notice IntelliMemory is listed right up here. That's the first thing I disable. I do not know why Samsung puts this on their SSD-based Ultrabooks. It's really designed for machines that have slow hard drives and it uses RAM for caching. What it's going to do is going to use up all the RAM on your computer, pointlessly caching things when your SSD is already fast. Do yourself a favor. Turn off IntelliMemory or uninstall it right away. You can't expand the memory on this. You've got 4 gigs. That's what you got. You can always get a bigger SSD drive, so don't waste your RAM with this utility. In terms of performance, this is an Ultrabook with a ULV Ultra Low Voltage CPU. That means it's going to run cooler. It's going to run quieter. This guy is like silent. If you're just doing office and productivity work, you won't hear it at all. Now, if you're going to play Civ 5, which I have done with this, and it plays it fine at low settings, full native resolution, uh, you get about 30 frames, then you're going to hear the fan blowing it like you would with any laptop. But in normal use, does not get burning hot, does not get noisy. For our performance scores, the Windows Experience Index, you can see 7.1 for the 2.0 GHz Core i7 ULV, 5.9 for memory. We would love to see that higher, but it's single channel RAM, so that's what you're going to get there. Desktop graphics performance is 4.5. That's something that dual channel will help boost a little bit too, that number there. 3D graphics is 6.2. That's pretty healthy and hearty. And primary hard disk, in other words, that light on SSD drive, 8.1. Nice, fast SSD. Also, in crystal disk mark, this guy scored very nice and fast. In fact, it scored higher than did our Samsung Series 7 Ultra. So here's our crystal disk mark store scores. And you can see excellent numbers there, particularly on the right speeds. That's where it pulls ahead of some other drives. Those are excellent numbers. You get in a fast drive here, and it makes it feel fast. This is one of the quickest booting machines. I swear, it's seven seconds, and boom, you're ready to go. Awesome there. And again, it's an expensive machine. You should be getting the best of everything, including performance. On PC Mark 7, it scored 4408, which is par for the course for a latest generation Ultrabook. We've seen anything from the low 4000s up to almost 5000 with current Ultrabooks. The machine is available with Intel HD 4000 graphics. There's no dedicated graphics option. Uh, given current technology, there's just no hope of fitting dedicated graphics and the cooling required into a machine like this. This is about ultra portability and reasonable power. It's good enough certainly for the included Adobe Photoshop Elements trial that's on here for full Photoshop, for Illustrator, for even some HD movie editing, but you know, it's not a gaming machine, folks. It has a four cell lithium ion polymer battery that is sealed inside. And it's 44 watt per hour. Samsung says up to nine hours. That's a little bit optimistic. Certainly that's a smaller battery that's in the sim than in the Samsung Series 7 Ultra. But we're still testing battery life on this guy. And right now it looks like it's approaching six hours, which is actually better than some previous generation Samsung Series 9 machines and pretty respectable. And this is the compact 40 watt hour charger that it ships with. So light and easy on your bag too, which it should be. Nobody wants to carry a two pound brick with their two and a half pound Ultrabook, do they? So that's the Samsung Series 9, and who is this for? This is obviously for somebody who can 
number one, afford it at $1,300. It's a little more pricey than the average $1,000 Ultrabook. Who needs extreme portability, this crazy lightness, uh, the superb thinness? You put this in your bag, and it's not going to be the biggest thing in your business bag if you're traveling, that's for sure. If the MacBook Air is akin to a manila envelope, this is akin to a sheet of paper. It's, it's insanely portable. Uh, for somebody who wants something that's really gorgeous, particularly if you're using this as a second machine and you have another machine, so you don't care so much about having a whole lot of full-size ports on here, uh, it's hard to be. Everything just works perfectly on this. I have to say, I don't ever get to say that about notebooks, but like the trackpad, it just works. It, it always responds as I wish to, so I don't feel the sadness that I usually would in not having it. The touchscreen, for example, the keyboard, yeah, the travel is low, but really lovely to type on. The screen, no glare, beautiful, awesome colors, good enough for photo editing in a serious way. It's just, well, it's the best of the best, and it's going to cost something. So that's the Samsung Series 9. No, it's not cheap, but it's certainly if you're looking for something that's extremely thin, extremely light, very fast, very capable, with one of the best displays on the market, this is going to be it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to hit that like button.